Good morning. It is my great pleasure as president of UCAMS to welcome you to this online celebration of our 50 years of existence. I would like to start by thanking all of you for joining, presidents of our member societies and supporting members, presidents of related chemical organizations, former presidents of UCAMS, former members of our executive board, and all of you who from the very beginning enthusiastically accepted our invitation to participate to this, today on this online celebration of the 50 years of UCAMS. I am very glad to see that we are now more than 200 online. We are greatly honored and very much appreciate uh, the participation of two Nobel laureates, Professor Jean-Marie Len and Professor Ben Feringa, who will uh, address us shortly. And of course, we could not have come this far without the diligent work of our secretariat, who have done their very best to make this event a success. UCAMS, the European Chemical Society, previously the European Association for Chemical and Molecular Sciences, started as FEX, the Federation of European Chemical Societies in Prague, on the 3rd of July, 1970. So this year would be our, or is our 50th birthday. Therefore, we had planned many activities along the year. Among them, let me just mention that we have edited a brochure with historical facts and with the perspectives and contributions of former members of our presiding council. We also visited and published an interview with uh, Dr. Wolfgang Fritsche, one of the founding fathers of FEX. And uh, we, of course, had planned this uh, celebration today in, in Prague. Due to the pandemia, many of these events had to be canceled. And so uh, the main celebration that, as I say, would be taking place in Prague today has been substituted by what we are doing now online. But nevertheless, we hope that next year we will all meet again in Prague because we are going to provide the University of Chemistry and Technology where FEX started our historical landmark recognition. As you are probably aware, in UCAMS, besides our well-established scheme of different awards to individuals, such as the uh, gold medal and the service and lecture awards, we have launched in 2018 a new historical landmarks program to identify chemical sites that have played a vital role in defining the cultural makeup and history of Europe. No doubt, the place where it all started deserves this highest recognition. So hopefully next year, on this very day, we will meet in Prague and we will award the corresponding plaque, an event to which you are all, of course, cordially invited. And that is all from my side. I thank you all again for your participation. So let us together celebrate 50 years of UCAMS, 50 years of uh, European chemistry. And now I will hand uh, over to Nineta Harstil, our Secretary General, who will prepare, sorry, who will share the program we have prepared for today. Thank you very much and let's enjoy the day. Thank you. Dear colleagues, dear speakers, dear guests, it is with great excitement and honor that I, on behalf of the European Chemical Society, welcome you to this celebration. I'm delighted to start off our birthday celebration program, which I hope you will find enjoyable as well as educational. Let me give you a quick overview of the program. We will kick off this special event by streaming the EU Camps video. This video was a priority for us for several years, and we are proud 
to share it with you here live for the first time ever today. The video will be followed up by an amazing lineup of speakers, including Nobel laureates, EU CAMS executive board members, representatives from our member societies and supporting members, professional networks, our sister organizations and collaborators. However, to understand our present and future, we have to understand our past. And we have prepared a lovely collection of photographs to revive some of the milestones from the rich UCAMS history. And this is not the end yet. We have pre prepared a special surprise for you, which will remain a secret for now. Finally, even though we were not able to meet in Prague as it was originally foreseen, we will still blow out the candles on our birthday cake, as well as share birthday cards with well wishes that we have received from all around the world. So, without further ado, let's start our celebration by premiering the EUCAMS video. You may have heard about UCHEMS, the European Chemical Society. But do you know who we are and what we do? We represent chemists from our member societies and other chemistry-related organizations in Europe. At UCHEMS, we believe that science has no borders. This is why we aim to provide a unified European voice on key policy issues in chemistry and foster scientific discussions. We rely on a wide network of researchers involved in all fields of chemistry. Every year, we give awards to recognize excellence in chemistry research. We promote chemistry among the general public and policymakers. We publish newsletters and organize conferences and workshops open to the public. Our goal is developing sustainable solutions to today's major societal challenges. We organize focused academic conferences and the biennial UCHEMS Chemistry Congress the overarching European Congress of Chemical Sciences. We also set up a historical chemistry landmark program to show the significance of chemistry in the general cultural heritage and history of European citizens. We have been active since 1970, initially under the name of FEX, Federation of European Chemical Societies. In 2004, we adopted the UCHEMS designation the European Association for Chemical and Molecular Sciences. Meanwhile, we established our headquarters in Brussels amidst the European Quarter Institutions. Today you know us as UCHEMS, the European Chemical Society. In 2020, we celebrate our 50th anniversary, 50 years of chemistry across Europe and beyond. And this is just the beginning. Our guest speakers are ready and we are very curious to hear what they have to say. Our first speaker is a Nobel Prize winner, Professor Jean-Marie Len, followed by another Nobel Prize winner, Professor Ben Peringa. After that, we will hear some facts about the history of EUCAMS from Dr. Brigitte Van Tegelen and greetings from the EUCAMS treasurer, Professor Eckhart Rull. Professor Len, we are honored you are here with us today and I kindly ask you to say a few words. Hello, 
It's a pleasure to be here with everybody today. I would like to, of course, to congratulate UCAMS for this 50th anniversary. I would, of course, like to thank everybody who has contributed to this success, the people who organized the meetings, the members of the boards of the committees, and of course, the staff which behind the lines made it possible. I have been a very long time supporter of European Union, even before it existed since 1957, which is quite some time ago. When I was in high school, I felt that European Union was our future. I'm happy then, I was happy over the years to see that European chemical community came together and built up. I also contributed to another aspect of that, which is to launch the European system of chemical journals in 1994, together with Peter Görlitz and with the German, with the support of the German Chemical Society. Let me now make a few remarks on chemistry in general. All too often is chemistry considered as a mere utilitarian activity, barely a science when it is not despised. It must be green, it must be sustainable, it must answer the questions raised by society, it must process the CO2 that others have produced, it must provide the solutions to problems that others have generated and so on. It is great to be considered so resourceful but is this really what chemistry is all about? No. Let me present that in the following way. Some years ago, a science writer from one of those so-called high impact journals, he told me that he was writing an essay on the big questions in science. Noting then that the physicists proclaim, we are trying to unravel the laws of the universe. Big question indeed. The biologist said, we are unveiling the rules of life. Big question, of course. What are the chemists doing? They are producing new molecules. They are making novel materials, useful drugs. Fine. Very nice. Very good for everybody. Of much help. But where is the big question? My answer was in substance the following. Wait a minute. Maybe chemistry is in charge of the biggest question of all. And that is, how does, how did matter become complex along the ages? How is it that from divided to condensed to organized, to living, and on to thinking matter, the universe was producing an entity that is able to ask about the origin of the very universe itself from which it emerged and about its coming about. An entity that is able in a radical shortcut to interrogate the universe itself from which it is born. The answer to this question, this big question is simple. It's one word, it's by self-organization. It happened on the basis of the laws of our universe. Self-organization from simplicity to higher and higher complexity. The problem then is, how did it happen? It is the task of chemistry to decipher what lies behind this word. Chemistry builds the bridge between the laws of the universe, the general laws on which everything depends. And there are specific expressions in life and thought as we know it and in life and thought on other planets where I'm convinced exists too, and where all the elements will be the same, and where the, chemi the chemical bonds will be the same, 
and where the combinations will be the same. This is also what chemistry brought to mankind, the periodic table of the elements, which are the elements of visible matter everywhere in the universe. So it is chemistry which builds this bridge between the general laws and their expression. The goal is to discover, to understand and to implement the processes that govern the evolution of matter towards increasing complexity from the elementary particle to the property we call thinking. On the occasion of the International Year of Chemistry 2011, the French Physical Society asked me for a brief text for their magazine, Reflet de la Physique, and I concluded this text in a somewhat provocative way that chemistry is to physics what the Beethoven symphony is to the laws of acoustics. Without acoustics, there is no symphony, but acoustics does not contain the symphony. And that is also what chemistry is. So with these few words, on the future of chemistry, and especially in these days, don't forget that the virus is just a bunch of trivial, stupid molecules. They don't even live. We will get it. We will overcome it, thanks to science, thanks to chemistry. All these are chemical interactions. We will understand them, and we will overcome. So this is a pathway for future, for many other futures. And I would like, again, to very warmly congratulate UKMS for these first 50 years and send my best wishes for the next 50 years. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Len, for this thoughts-provoking address. We now welcome Professor Ben Feringa. Professor Ben Feringa, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to briefly address you at this special UGEMS event. And I would like to start with congratulating the entire European chemical community with the fifth anniversary of the European Chemical Society. Let me emphasize the important role Eugems has played in the past decades to bring together learned societies in chemistry all over Europe. It succeeded in making our community of scientists to join forces and continue to bring the message forward that chemistry is the creative and creating science par excellence. More than ever, chemists either being engaged in teaching or involved in chemical research or in development work in academia, institutes, or industry, will have to unite to address several of the most challenging problems society is facing. It's beyond any doubt that chemists will play a key role in the development of materials for energy storage, the pharmaceuticals of the future, conversion of CO2 in fuels or new chemical building blocks, or recycling of plastics, just to mention a few major challenges ahead of us. Eugems not only brings together a large community of chemists in Europe, but it arguably also represents us at numerous occasions towards society, politics, and industry, and advocating how Eugems chemists can and will address these challenges together with our colleagues all over the world. Modern chemistry indeed has many faces, and the fundamental problems we face are also very diverse. But perhaps that's our strength like the diversity of our community here together in Eugems. Sometimes it might all look a bit complex, but do not forget we should be very happy. Our complex molecular systems not re representing one of the most challenging fundamental aspects of chemistry in the decades ahead of us. Professor Lane already mentioned it. The fundamental questions, the molecular origin of life, just to mention one. Last year, we celebrated 150 years of periodic table, and it was Mendeleev 
who gave the chemists a common language. 50 years ago, Euchems gave us a common voice. We can be very proud indeed, and the voice of this European Learned Society will be more important than ever. In shaping our future, we will have to go far beyond our current horizon. We have indeed to leave our comfort zone if we really want to change the face of our chemical industries, building our sustainable society of the future, or answering some of the very fundamental questions where chemistry is at the lead. Cooperation and taking advantage of all the talents in our community, the Euchems community and beyond, will enable major changes. Yes, Euchems plays a key role, in my opinion, in advocating the importance of investment in chemistry, as our community will make inventions that will make the difference. But equally important is bringing forward the message of the beauty of knowledge, the beauty of insights, the marvelous wonders of the molecular world, the joy of discovery. Stimulating the young talents in chemistry, which are eager to shape our future, encourage them to think bold and stimulate their creativity and imagination. I'm particularly pleased to see that Euchems is very active in this respect. And let's also not forget the role of a learned society like Euchems in maintaining quality of thought in an era where we are facing to be flooded with information, joint expertise and quality of information will be, in my opinion, to be more important than ever. Euchems will definitely help us to maintain the high standards. I would like to finish with briefly mentioning that exact 50 years ago, when Euchems was born, I started as a first year undergraduate student to perform my very first chemical experiment. How could this young student have ever realized that in 2018, he would be honored with the European Chemistry Gold Medal at the seventh Euchems Chemistry Conference in Liverpool? This was not only an excellent conference, a highly diverse and inspiring program, but a memorable event indeed, where we could also enjoy the Beatles singing once again. I'm very grateful to the European chemical community, proud to be a member, and I consider it as a privilege to be able to share my enthusiasm for our colorful discipline with so many colleagues to ones uh, and friends all across Europe and across the world. I would like to conclude to once more congratulate Jochems and wish you all much success with the important mission for our joint future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Feringa, for sharing enthusiasm about chemistry and Jochems with all of us today. Next on our festive program is Dr. Brigitte Van Tigelen, Chair of EUCAM's Working Party on History of Chemistry. Let's see what she has prepared for us. On July 3rd, 1970, at a time Europe was divided by an iron curtain, chemists from East and West came together in Prague. Representatives of 19 chemical societies traveled from 14 countries to attend the inaugural meeting of the Federation of European Chemical Societies. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the historical event that brings us together today from all over the world and under a format that would not have deemed possible at that time. The way, however, we are coming together today, despite the circumstances that hinder travels, definitely reflects the initial values of common belonging and collegiality that lied at the core of the European Chemical Society since its very beginning. As every historical moment, what occurred on that day in 1970 is a point in a trajectory, an outcome of past efforts and a seed for the future. In the mid 60s already, Several chemists felt indeed that quite a number of activities in chemistry, be they professional or scientific, 
were necessitated on a European basis. The process to create the federation was initiated by Eric Parker from the Royal Institute of Chemistry, now merged into the Royal Society of Chemistry. Western European societies, big and small membership alike, were invited to discuss the proposal. And the proposal was met with interest. However, Wolfgang Fritsche from the GDCH, the German Chemical Society, pushed for a broader vision of Europe that would also include chemical societies from Eastern and Middle Europe. This was a bold step and a visionary one. It was of course of no coincidence that this wish would come from a German whose country was split by a geopolitical divide after World War II. By 1968, a small task group of seven people was convened to draft Statedus. This group already represented diversity of what was to become FEX and ultimately the Un European Chemical Society. The two Western initiators, that is the Royal Institute of Chemistry and the German Chemical Society, two important Eastern chemical societies, Czechoslovak Chemical Society and Hungarian Chemical Society, the Chemical Society of Austria, a country that had historically been a door between West and East and also reaching to the Balkans, and then two smaller but nevertheless active Western chemical societies, the Dutch Chemical Society and the French-speaking Belgian Chemical Society. The final version of the Statutus was voted next year and translated into four languages, English, French, German, and Russian. Since many societies responded positively to the call to enter such a federation, the meeting in Prague was organized a little more than two years after the Spra Prague Spring ended. Again, this is a very symbolic event. On the inaugural meeting, 18 societies from 14 countries were accepted as members. 10 years later, the number had already risen to 30 member societies from 24 countries. And 25 years later, membership reached 41 societies from 32 countries, pushing the boundaries further west, east, north, and south across the Mediterranean Sea. In the meantime, the political divide between east and west was erased. The European Union grew larger and stronger, and has and that has been recalled by both Jean-Marie Len and Ben Feringa. Chemists met new challenges in serving society, science, and the humankind. But now, like then, our European Chemical Society keeps fulfilling duties that were expressed by Wolfgang Fritsche in 1980, and I will end with a quote. It is the aim and purpose of the Federation to create a forum for chemists in the whole of Europe to meet, to exchange opinions, and ultimately to ensure a better understanding. We are convinced that in achieving these aims, the Federation does not only contribute to the progress in chemistry and to the benefit of chemists, but also to preserve the conditions and the atmosphere of peace. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brigitte, for this brief, pres brief presentation of rich and visionary history of EU chems. Professor Eckhart Rühl, the floor is yours. Thank you. Dear participants of the celebration of 50 years of EU chems, great visions into the future and a chemistry success story driven by the member society of the European Chemical Society. This is in short what the core of UCHEMS is since 1970, when 17 chemical societies met in Prague for founding facts. At that time, nobody knew that this was the start of a highly successful community which has today 51 member societies and supporting members representing more than 160,000 chemists from almost all European countries. Federal concepts are not only the strength of the European Union, but that is also true 
for the European Chemical Society's joining for UCAMS. For UCAMS, the saying of Aristotle is more than true. The whole is more than the sum of its parts. But at the same time, each member society is precious to UCAMS and constant efforts are made to keep the member societies together since we are all sharing not only dedication and enthusiasm for chemistry, but also responsibility and clear political visions for being reliable partners of the entire European society. The European uh, chemistry member societies bridge the gap between the national activities and professional chemistry in their own country and the European facets by joining with one voice what chemistry has to say in Europe these days. This is synergy in the true sense where coordinated activities of UCAMS are started and shared and reach the individuals all over Europe. Recent examples are multiple activities on the occasion of the International Year of the Periodic Table and were held in many European countries. The biannual European Chemistry Congresses hosted all over Europe and building constantly a network of cultural heritage sites and vice versa. The expertise from the member societies uh, and their members is jointly focused, for example, via UCAMS to parliamentary workshops addressing outstanding topics related to chemistry in Europe. We know that each member society does everything that is possible for the benefit of UCAMS and the other member societies, and sometimes even more than expected. For example, being host of the general assemblies or European chemistry congresses. This is done always friendly, generous, highly efficient and pragmatic where everybody's arguments and proposals are carefully heard and considered. This is what I personally enjoy with UCAMS as a part of Europe that is alive, that works tightly together in the field that joins all of us, chemistry. I'm happy that we will hear in the following greetings of some member societies and their view on UCAMS. And we will also see later birthday cards from other member societies and friends of UCAMS with all their good wishes. I wish UCAMS and I hope I speak here for all participants in this event, a bright future for UCAMS in the next 50 years. And we trust on the full support of all member societies and members and those who will join in the future. Happy birthday, UCAMS. Thank you very much, Eckert, for your continuous proactive contributions and support to UCAMS. Next up, we have speakers from our member societies. We will hear live the presidents and council members of the Catalan, Finnish, German, Hungarian, and Romanian Chemical Society. We will also have the pleasure of hearing the, the president of one of our supporting members, the Federation, European Federation for Medicinal Chemistry. First up is the president of the Catalan Chemical Society, Professor Uhake. Okay. Bon dia i felicitats al, a l'UCAMS pel 50 aniversari. Good morning and congratulations to UCAMS for the 50th anniversary. This is a big celebration for UCAMS today, but this is also a big celebration for chemistry that is a common point among all of us. We love chemistry, among other things, because chemistry is a tool to solve problems, small problems or, or the big challenges that our society is facing today, like energy, climate change, and so on or for instance, the COVID crisis. So chemistry is also involved in solving this problem. We should take advantage of this global pandemic to put science in the first line of, uh, of society. So I would like to convince this audience to benefit from this crisis to persuade our society about the importance of science in general and chemistry in particular. So I think this is our responsibility as, as chemists. 
I want to add also a comment on one of the biggest worries we have as a society, that it's racism and discrimination for whatever reason. So we must be fully committed to eradicate this kind of behavior in our society. And we must start by our own chemical societies. This is our duty. I know we've heard many times about that, but while the problem persists, it's important, very important to keep it always in mind. So we should keep it in, in, in mind and to act to eradicate this. And finally, let me add a few words about the Catalan Chemical Society. So we are not a very big society, but we try to be quite active. For instance, we have organized several uh, UK division meetings. And in our society, we, it was created uh, back in the 30s of the last century, together with physicists and mathematicians. Then we live a very black period in our history. But in the 80s, we became a full independent society. And from that moment, we tried to incorporate the Catalan Chemical Society to the UKIMS. Though it was not a very easy task at the beginning, but finally in 2007 we succeeded and we were accepted as a full member of UKIM. So we are very, very happy and we are very, very proud to be part of this big family of chemical societies in Europe. So congratulations to everybody, to UKIM. Felicidades a todos y a Gaudí de la celebración. Adeu. Thank you, Professor Ojaque, for your messages and birthday wishes from the Catalan Chemical Society. From Finland, we have now online Professor Anno Airaksinen, the newly elected president of the Finnish Chemical Society. Dear president and colleagues, the Finnish Chemical Society congratulates the European Chemical Society for the 50 years anniversary. During these 50 years, UCAMS has made amazing work in promotion of European chemistry and chemistry research by improving professional collaboration and visibility of chemistry to public and among policymakers. Chemistry is a significant key player for answering and solving many global questions and challenges. And during these years, UCAMS has actively contributed to the public debate and decision-making by providing expert views and scientific advice based on the most recent scientific knowledge. The Finnish Chemical Society has been one of the member organizations since foundation of the Federation of European Chemical Societies and was one of the 18 member societies participating the inaugural meeting in Prague in 3rd of July, 1970, exactly 50 years ago. We have had the great privilege to contribute UCAMS activities in several UCAMS divisions during these years, together with our European colleagues. I think that in these exceptional times, our joint efforts are more important than ever. We wish UCAMS bright future and many successful years to come. Our warmest congratulations to the 50 years old society. Happy birthday, UCAMS. Thank you very much, Professor Ayraksinen, and greetings to the North. Speaking on behalf of GDCH, German Chemical Society, we have the honor now to invite its president, Professor Schreiner. Dear colleagues, dear ladies and gentlemen, as a very firm believer in the unity of Europe, I'm very pleased to participate in this online event. Of course, it would have been much nicer for all of us if we had met in person, but like so many events, this ceremony has fallen victim to the corona pandemic. Let us therefore make the best of it. In 1970, the German Chemical Society was one of those 17 founding societies of the Federation of European Chemical Societies. This is quite remarkable because this was in the middle of the Cold War with a wall across Europe separating us, separating the Eastern and Western European parts, and that they still joined forces to form a European society. We chemists in Germany are very proud that the driving force for this came from the then managing director of the German Chemical Society, who was named already Dr. Wolfgang Fritsche. He said very clearly and plainly, and this is true today, chemistry is a science, not a political issue. He said and insisted that the Eastern European societies should also be involved. It is thanks to him that the Federation of European Chemical Societies did not become a purely Western European association. He was a member of the first executive committee and simultaneously headed one of the two secretariats of the society. The other one was in Budapest. Pilar Goya and Wolfram Koch, who is now the managing director, 
visited together Wolfgang Fritsche, who's now, now over 90 years old, uh, back in January when it was still possible. He spoke very lively about the foundation of the Federation of European Chemical Societies. You can read, if you're interested, the interview with him on the UCHEMS website. Not only GDCH, but also UCHEMS owes Wolfgang Fritsche a great de de deal of gratitude. In 1993, he was therefore appointed a lifetime honorary president by the Federation of the European Chemical Societies. And we too, as German chemists, are extremely grateful to QCHEMS and its predecessor organization, the Federal Federation of European Chemical Societies, because they facilitated the unification of the West German and East German chemical societies after the reunification of our two states. During the Cold War, the Chemical Society of the German Democratic Republic was not allowed to become a member of the Federation. But since the 1980s, East German chemists were allowed to attend at least the meetings of the General Assembly as guests when they were held in an Eastern European country. Thanks to the very tight personal contacts established in these meetings, it was possible then after the fall of the Berlin Wall to speed up the unification of our two chemical societies. And as early as 91, the German chemical societies were able to merge to an old German chemical society. Today, our young colleagues, uh, in part, this is a good thing, can hardly imagine this, but people of my generation still remember Europe being divided into East and West, which made contacts and communication so much more difficult than today. The achievement of the Federation of European Chemical Societies and its founding members must therefore be rated all the higher. Nowadays, we have completely different opportunities for communication. We're witnessing one of them today in cooperation um, so I'm very happy to see that all these ways have been used uh, to further our collaboration. I think in all modesty, we can say that the European chemists have been doing much better than the political Europe has been doing, which is weakened by Brexit and many other conflicts that are in a great part unnecessary. We work together across borders. We live the European community. Across these borders, many corporations are being executed, many new are developed and friendships form and Brexit will not change that. We can be a little bit proud of what UCAMS has done. We all know of the challenges of the future. They're bigger than, than Europe alone. It is slowing global warming, providing enough food for everybody and sustaining energy through renewable resources that cannot be solved without chemistry. They cannot be solved without global cooperation of scientists. We as German chemists look forward to a common future as a member, as a strong member of the European Chemical Society. In that sense, thank you very much and happy birthday, UCHEMS. Thank you very much, Professor Schreiner, for joining us live today. The president of the Hungarian Chemical Society and a member of the EU Chems Executive Board, Professor Lilia Simon Sakkadi, is our next speaker. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, uh, as the president of the Hungarian Chemical Society, I am pleased to represent the Hungarian chemist at the 50 years anniversary celebration of UCAMS. The Hungarian Chemical Society is 113 years old. It is one of the oldest professional organizations in Hungary, currently represents about uh, 2,500 chemists working in academia and industry. Uh, we can proudly look back on our long history and especially uh, on our achievements uh, with the uh, UCAMS over the last 50 years. As the HCS is one of the funding member society of societies of facts, <clears throat> I am particularly pleased to have this opportunity to briefly present our joint activities on this festive occasion. Later during the program, you will also see a pictured compilation of uh, the HCS contribution to UCAMS activities. Uh, as you have heard already, the, when uh, FACTS was established in 1970, and for many years thereafter, uh, this organization operated with two general uh, secretariats. The Western office operated in, in Frankfurt and uh, the Eastern office in, in Budapest uh, at the Secretariat of the Hungarian Chemical Society. 
So the main aim was to facilitate stronger professional relations with Central and Eastern European states in those days of a divided Europe. Within FACS and UCAMS, uh, the representatives of the Hungarian Chemical Society are widely seen as leading players. Among them, five colleagues have served as general secretary of FACS uh, from uh, 1970 to 2001. And Professor Gábor Náraj Szabolcs, the former president of the Hungarian Chemical Society, served as the last president of FACS from 2002 to 2005. As regard my activities within UCAMS, I was an appointing member of uh, the executive board uh, from um, 2010 to 2013 as a, one of the two representatives of divisions chairs became uh, an elected member in 2014. Five Hungarian colleagues, um, including Professor Narai Szabó and me, chaired the working parties and um, divisions of FEX and um, UCAMS. And of course, uh, many other Hungarian colleagues are working actively uh, within their division. Hungary has hosted a number of FEX and UCAMS conferences over the past uh, 50 years. And one of the most significant conferences of this was the first European Chemistry Congress of UCAMS in 2006, with 2,300 participants, six Nobel laureates, including the previous speaker, Professor Jean-Marie Lane, and also other 100 invited speakers. So, so far, five Hungarian representatives have received recognition, FACS uh, and uh, UCAMS Award for Service for their excellent work. So finally, on behalf of all Hungarian chemists, I would like to thank for the opportunities and, uh, and the confidence received of the European Chemical Society and congratulate on its 50th anniversary. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Livia, for presenting Hungarian contributions to FACTS and EU camps since the very beginning and for birthday wishes from the Hungarian Chemical Society. The next speaker should come as no surprise to you, since she has been an incredibly active member of EU camps for many years. Speaking on behalf of the Romanian Chemical Society, both as the chair of its food chemistry division and the member of the council, I welcome Kristina Todashka. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. I'm uh, honored to participate in this beautiful celebration of chemistry and cooperation. I first learned about FECS, Federation of European Chemical Societies, in 2004, when I was in the middle of my PhD studies. At that time, Professor Sorin Roșca, the president of Romanian Chemical Society, asked the young active members of Romanian Chemical Society to join efforts for a good local organization of the General Assembly of FACTS. Uh, in this way, I had the chance to witness a historical moment in UCAM's existence, the moment when the decision of changing the name from FACTS to UCAM's was taken. This decision, was made during a meeting which took place in the Romanian Parliament House in Bucharest. Three years later, I was given a different chance. I was sent to represent the Romanian young chemist to a meeting in Berlin. The meeting was intended to discuss and organize a dues division within UCAMS. At that time, in Romanian Chemical Society, we didn't have a young chemist group, but using the experience that I gained in Berlin, um, on my return home, I managed to start the Romanian Chemical Society Youth Section, which over the years developed, and it's now one of the most dynamic and active groups. The Berlin meeting was the starting point of European Young Chemist Network, and for me it was the beginning of an adventure, because uh, I was elected part of the first steering committee of UICN, and I started a long activity, first as communicating uh, communication officer, after that as secretary and chair of UICN. It was a, a lot of work, 
work and um, I had the chance to develop into a dynamic and multicultural environment. Therefore, a personal level and a professional one, I am grateful for you can I'm grateful that you was created 50 years ago and that it offers a space where chemistry is the main language which connects scientists beyond borders. On behalf of the Romanian Chemical Society, I would like to wish you cans happy 50 years anniversary and many more successful years to come. Uh, and la mulți ani eu cans. Thank you. Thank you, Cristina, for conveying messages and birthday wishes from the Romanian Chemical Society. The president of the European Federation for Medicinal Chemistry, Dr. Yves Oberson, is our next speaker. Thank you. So I, I would like to wish uh, our dear friends and colleagues at UCAMS a very happy anniversary. The European Federation for Medicinal Chemistry and uh, its scientific community of medicinal chemists and uh, chemical biologists wishes you uh, really all the best. As you know, UCAMS and EFMC have been working together on many projects over the last few years. It started with the STOA working breakfast at the European Parliament uh, in April 2016 on the important topic of antibiotic resistance. And it was followed some time later by another workshop on the causes and cures for Parkinson's disease, another topic of importance for our society. As you know, there are currently no cures for Parkinson's disease yet. And in view of the aging of our population, this is becoming a really important topic. In parallel, very close interactions developed between the EFMC and the Life Science Division of UCAMS with an exchange of uh, scientific sessions at our um, mutual symposia, the European Chemical Biology Symposium of the Life Science Division of UCAMS and EFMC's International uh, Symposium on Medicinal Chemistry. And what makes me particularly happy is to see the increased interactions between the European Young Chemist Network of UCAMS and the Young Scientist Network of EFMC. This is a very dynamic group of young uh, investigators, young scientists, and this is our future. It is in, in a general manner really a great pleasure to see all these interactions developing and beyond this all that um, UCAMS uh, has been doing to support European scientific community um, over, over time. My hope is that this will continue and that UCAMS and EFMC will collaborate. Well, why not? Another 50 years, maybe. <laughs> In any case, um, EFMC wishes you all the very best and a very happy anniversary. Thank you, UCAMS. Thank you, Dr. Oberson. As our community knows, EU chems is comprised of many, to be precise, 19 or even better, 18 plus one professional networks, each focused on a certain field of chemistry or on a certain chemistry related topic. The professional networks have two representatives in the EU chems executive board. And one of these two representatives, Professor Marco Arlorio, will join us today and say a few words on this festive occasion. Marco, thank you very much for joining us today. Dear President, dear President-elect, dear Executive Board, dear attending guests, I'm delighted to join everyone in celebrating this 50th anniversary of our European Chemical Society. I am truly honored to represent the UCAMS professional networks which as division and working parties are one of the operational arms of the European uh, Chemical Society. As chair of division and representant of 18 professional networks within the UCAMS, I would like to briefly highlight three key points regarding this important event. The first one is related to the historical activity of the division. Since the beginning, in the last century, FACS, then UCAMS and currently European Chemical Society were organizing divisions. 
These divisions announced networking in uh, their own fields of expertise, promoting collaboration with other European and international organizations. These professional networks organize high quality scientific conferences in chemical and molecular sciences at inter and trans disciplinary level. The second one is related to the link between the past and the future. Since the beginning, starting from our funding, the division constantly work in order to improve the fundamental role of chemistry in our life. The image of chemistry is often underestimated or misconsidered by the European citizens. Our mission is to defend, to promote and develop a positive ethical consensus toward chemistry in our society. Bridging together the professionality of academic environment and industry with the requirements of the modern society. Finally, the third point is related to our vision about the next future. The professional networks uh, have made an important contribution to promoting the name of the UCAMs within the professional and scientific environments, particularly where chemistry is the principal topic, the principal interest. Connection and interdisciplinary collaboration within chemistry sciences are the main targets for our professional networks. The future will be a challenge, but three words will continue to be the pillars for us. Chemistry is life. On behalf of the division and working parties, which I'm representing here, my warmest congratulations to our European society in this anniversary. 50th is the departure and not the finish line. Congratulations, happy birthday. Thank you very much, Marco. UCAMS takes pride in having many active collaborations all around the globe. And we are delighted that many of our alliances are here with us today. We feel fortunate to have the president of the European Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, Federation of Asian Chemical Societies and Federation of Latin American Chemical Societies with us today. They will address us live while the president of the American Chemical Society is sending his kind birthday wishes with a pre-recorded video. We welcome our next speaker, the president of IUPAC, Professor Christopher Brett. Good morning. It's a great pleasure for me on behalf of the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry to bring you greetings and give congratulations to the European Chemical Society on your 50th anniversary, your golden jubilee. It is certainly an anniversary to remember and the successes of UCHEMS have demonstrated how important it is for the chemical organizations and institutions all over Europe, academic and industrial, to speak as one voice in the challenging times that have always existed, but particularly since the founding of FECS and that are now becoming more crucial. Chemistry is not the problem. Chemistry is essential and is part of the solution to many of the challenges that the world faces, as has been pointed out by many of the previous speakers. Last year was the centenary of IUPAC, founded in 1919 with a significant impetus from chemical industry to foment the speaking of a common language in chemistry. And we now include as part of our main objectives the free exchange of scientific information and fostering sustainable development worldwide at a global level. Last year was also the International Year of the Periodic Table coordinated by IUPAC, with UCHEMS being a main partner and playing an important part in demonstrating the significance and fascination of the chemical elements, particularly reminding us about the scarce elements which we need to take care of. It was also a lesson for us all in how important our outreach 
and public awareness. Much enthusiasm was generated amongst all, particularly amongst young people. The enthusiasm must carry on for the younger of us are our future and we will need all the tools and expertise that we can muster. It has been a great pleasure for IUPAC to collaborate with UCHEMS in the past and it is continuing and I'm sure that it will continue in the future. To finalize, I would like to wish you a very fruitful and chemically prosperous next 50 years when we can come together again and celebrate your centenary. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Brett, for joining us today. As EU Chems, at that time, FACTS, Federation of European Chemical Societies, had a role in triggering the Federation of Asian Chemical Societies, it is our great pleasure to welcome its current president, Professor Ku. Good morning, President Professor Pirla Goya, ladies and gentlemen. In the 1970s, UNESCO and many national aid agencies understood the important role on the application of chemistry to the development of social, economic, and the environmental well-being of nations. Accordingly, UNESCO helped to organize the formation of the FACS using the model that had been used with success to create the Federation of European Chemical Societies. Now it is called European Chemical Society. Two and a half thousand chemists from all of the world gathered in Taipei, Taiwan in December 2019. It's about a half year ago for a feast of chemistry to celebrate the 40th anniversary of FACS. It was founded in 1979, almost 10 years later than European Chemical Society. Currently, FACS includes 32 chemical societies to the west part, we have Mendeleev Russian, Turkish, and the Israel societies. To the east, there are Royal Australian and the New Zealand societies. In the middle, there are Japan, Korea, Taiwan, China, Thailand, India societies, and others. All of us have been successful in development of chemistry in the region through the network, working groups, and collaboration. Today is the most important day for us to celebrate our French organization, European Chemical Society. As the president of the FACS, I represent all of the 32 Asian Chemical Society members, extending our congratulations to European Chemical Society on your 50th anniversary celebration. Meanwhile, it is our wish to take this chance to initiate a mutual supporting relationship and substantial collaboration between FACS and the European Chemical Society. It is my hope that we shall meet again in the 20. 21 FACS Congress at Istanbul, or the 2022 European Chemical Society Congress at Lisbon in the future. Keep in touch and thank you all of you. Thank you very much, Professor Hu. We move now to the other side of the world and welcome Professor Garcia Rivera as our next speaker. So I was just informed that there are some technical issues with the camera and during his speech, we will keep the slide on for this technical reason. Thank you very much, Nineta. 
On behalf of the Latin America Federation of the Chemical Associations, it is my pleasure to congratulate you chems for your 50th anniversary. I would have to say that the Latin American Federation of Chemical Association gathers all the, the association and federations and chemical society from, from South America and from Latin America in general. FLAX was founded in 1959. So it's, it is now 61 year, years old. We are older than, than UCAMS, but I have to say that we have a lot, a lot to learn from UCAMS. We have to, to learn from, from the path that you had in, in terms of integration, how you have seeking, you have seek and unified purpose of, for chemistry, how you have actually launched new journals, integrate, for the, to spread the voice of, of chemistry in Europe and in the world, how you integrate diversity, different languages. And from, from the point of view of FLAX, we, we accept that we have a lot, a lot to learn from, from European Chemical Society and how you have actually integrated for leading the path of, of chemistry and science in general. I just want to be brief because I don't have the camera. Congratulations. Thank you very much for the invitation and thank you for leading the path, you chems. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us, Professor Garcia Rivera. The president of the American Chemical Society could not be with us in person today, but sent us the following one minute video. Let's watch it together. Hello everyone and greetings from El Paso, Texas. On behalf of the American Chemical Society's worldwide membership, it is my distinct pleasure to congratulate UCAMS on its 50th anniversary. These are testing times worldwide, but the chemistry community has a unique role to play in addressing these challenges. From medicinal chemistry to material science and beyond, chemistry practitioners worldwide are working diligently to serve the needs of our communities, wherever we are. International collaboration has always been near to my heart and career, and is also an important goal of the ACS. As we celebrate UCAM's 50 years and look towards its future, I look forward to our continued cooperation and encouraging scientific exchange and partnership whenever science leads us. A very happy birthday, UCAMS. I look forward to celebrating this milestone in person hopefully in the very near future. Our guest speaker part is thus concluded. We wish to extend our thanks and gratitude to all the guest speakers who made the time in their busy schedules to celebrate with us today live. Now it is time for some memorabilia from the past years of UCAMS which were kindly provided by our member societies and supporting members, as well as the founders of the European Young Chemists Network, EYCN. I wish you all to enjoy the next four minutes sliding through the history with Dvorak as the music background.
So, we are now finally ready to reveal our surprise. We decided to invite our European Young Chemists Network to prepare a surprise for our 50th anniversary celebration. And let's see what they did. Whether you are enjoying right now your morning coffee or your afternoon cup of tea, I invite you to sit back, relax, and appreciate the work and thoughtfulness in their video. You may, if you wish, for safety reasons, also fasten your seatbelts. Dear Youkens, thank you so much for the invitation to participate on this event. On behalf of IYCN, I would like to join everyone on the congratulations for your 50 years anniversary. In a toy's world, one chicken got away. She traveled to Liverpool to become Cam Chicken. Hi, all! These are the people who created me. I became the young chemist mascot, traveling around, visiting conferences, and meeting some nice people. Like here in Paris, where I made some new friends. Oh, uh, Aurora and Antonia's mother made me some nice dresses. And Robert and Ineta make sure I behave and they did all oh, I love it. During Corona times, I miss my friends very much. I'm happy to see you all here now and I want to wish you a delicious 50th birthday. Please and if sorry, you can't. What a gift for the road, you can Muchas felicidades, you can't. Sretch and Roger and you can't. Shitka and Alapshik and Radini and you can't. Happy anniversary, you can't. Happy birthday, you can't. Joyous anniversary, you can't. La? Mult? Aini? You can't. For more times, you can't. Hello, you camps! Gefeliciteerd! Love, bright love, and a you camps. Joyeux anniversaire, you camps. E. Y. C. C. N. Many thanks, EYCN. Absolutely great job. And we know we can always rely on you. After this splendid video, we now invite all our live speakers to join us on camera so that we can count down together, blow out the candles, and properly wish the European Chemical Society a happy birthday. I'm afraid I first have to give some instructions how exactly we are going to do this. They are very few, very simple, but nevertheless, please listen carefully. So the first one is that we, we will start counting down from 10, which means that I will say 10, and afterwards we all start with nine, eight, seven, and so on, counting down in our native language. And 
That's all. <clears throat> Are we ready to start? Any questions? Okay, so let's go then. 10. David. Felicidades, you came. Well done. Thank you all very much for joining us for this toast. We will have another one at the very end, so please stay online. We will somehow repeat this exercise. We are slowly approaching the end of today's program, but before we finish, it is our immense pleasure to share with you in the next five minutes the wonderful and inspiring birthday cards and wishes that we have received from you from all around the world. Thank you so much.
Hi, I'd like to address my most sincere birthday wishes to UCAMS, its member societies, professional networks, secretariat, executive board members, and of course to all European chemists. Much has changed over these last 50 years for UCAMS, but its original spirit to support the advancement of scientific knowledge as well as to promote dialogue among chemists and with society is a constant that has always been present. I believe that in these present times this spirit of dialogue as well as the rigor of the scientific speech is needed more than ever. I also believe that European Europeans need UCAMS more than ever and I know that UCAMS will continue to promote a dialogue towards an ever closer union of chemists and the chemical sciences. Happy 50th anniversary UCAMS! Last, but certainly not least, I would like to invite now the two hidden figures of today's celebration to join us with their cameras on, Jelena Lazic and Laura Jusset, UCAMS Science Communication and Policy Officers. Are you online with the cameras? Okay. So Laura and Jelena have joined UCAMS Secretariat quite recently and have undergone an intensive hands-on training since then. In our small secretariat team, complementary knowledge and skills together with careful planning and distribution of very many diverse tasks and activities is of a key importance. In this particular case, on the occasion of our online 50 years anniversary celebration project, which was designed by EUCAM Stars Group chaired by Pilar Goya, our president, I would like to extend my personal thanks and congratulations for excellent coordination and preparation of this online festive event to Jelena. Laura and myself have helped whenever needed while the main workload was on Jelena. Well done, it is a huge privilege to have a competent team. With this, our anniversary celebration is about to end. We have one more speaker for you, the EUCAMS president-elect, Professor Floris Rutius. Floris, please, the floor is yours. Dear friends and colleagues, in the speeches this morning, we have looked back at the past 50 years and we have seen what the role of UCAMS has been during these decades. It is fascinating to see that despite fundamentally different political systems, chemists from across Europe have found each other and started working together. And why is that? Because they have one important thing in common. They love chemistry. They know what chemistry can do an experience that chemistry goes beyond borders. Chemistry acts as a unifying theme. That is also why I like the new name of our society so much, the European Chemical Society. And we should be proud of this society. It had different names. It has grown over the years. It has become stronger, better organized, and it will continue to grow. Brexit was not foreseen, but despite the fact that the UK will no longer be part of the European Union, the Royal Society of Chemistry will remain one of the strong pillars within the European Chemical Society. Again, chemistry is stronger than politics. That is good, but there is still much to do. Think of the climate change due to greenhouse gases, the environmental problems like the plastic soup and the search for clean energy. Enormous societal challenges that need to be addressed and require the input of chemists. And all of a sudden, on top of that, we had the COVID-19 pandemic and its disrupt disruptive consequences for society. Again, chemists are needed in the political and societal discussions 
and they are needed to contribute to the scientific solutions. The European Chemical Society will continue to support the pan-European chemistry community in these efforts. And we can do so since we have grown into a firm organization representing through and with our member societies approximately 160,000 individual chemists. This of course also comes with the responsibility to stand for gender balance, inclusion, diversity and equal chances for everyone. Very fundamental principles that we pursue as a society because in the end it will make us a stronger community. Smart use of digital tools and social media, close collaborations with our member societies and developing attractive campaigns on relevant chemical and societal topics are among our key objectives to strive for a fierce position for European chemistry. We as the executive board of the society are eager to enter the next 50 years and we hope that we can do that together with all of you. That leaves me then with closing this ceremony and I would like to do so by getting you all back on the screen and to propose a toast. So if you could all unmute the microphones and the cameras and I hope you can Laura Jelena, can you all put, put us all on the screen? So, and I hope we have our glasses here. <laughs> so I would like to cl close then with proposing a toast for a bright future for European chemistry and also a successful next 50 years of the European Chemical Society. Happy birthday. 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 Happy birthday.